Officer, uh, good afternoon. My name is Mike Misanchin. I'm representing the plaintiffs. Can you tell me your full name? David Yule. And what is your business address? 3344 Churchview Avenue, Pittsburgh, PA 15227. And what is your uh, occupation? I'm a police officer. Can you tell us first off your educational background? Yes, I have uh, some college from uh, Indiana University of Pennsylvania, high school, uh, diploma from Highlands High School. You have your Act 120? I do. Okay, and uh, how long have you been a police officer for? I've been for a police officer for about three and a half years. All right, can you tell us just roughly on a daily basis what your job entails? Sure, my, my primary duties as a patrolman, I respond to various calls that are dispatched to me. Okay. Uh, so what basically happens? How is it that a person gets charged or doesn't get charged? In a situation like this, um, we defer or we we seek um, advice from the state dog warden because, I mean, obviously every situation is going to be different. In this particular case, um, the state dog warden, he recommended that the defendant was charged with a license violation, a rabies violation, a uh, running at large and harboring a dangerous dog. And so then basically from your, you go out to the scene, you do your investigation, you speak to the witnesses, get all of the facts uh, of the matter, and then you decide what is uh, potentially can be charged. Is that correct? That's correct. Then you spoke to the dog warden who specializes in these type of cases. Is that correct? Yes. Then based on the facts that you got speaking to the dog warden, you de then decided to charge the defendants with three or four, actually four citations. Is that correct? Four, correct. Okay. The first citation uh, that you had charged the defendant with was 459-305, Section 83. Is that correct? Yes. And in fact, in this case, the defendant was uh, found or pled guilty. Is that correct? Yes. And just so that I'm sure, uh, that statute says it shall be unlawful for the owner or keeper of any dog to fail to keep at all times the dog in any of the following manner. And the section you charged was under reasonable control of some person, correct? Yes. And so basically from your investigation, you found that the defendant did not keep their animal under reasonable control, correct? Correct. And as a result of the defendants not keeping the animal under reasonable control, uh, a minor, uh, a child that was seven years old was uh, bit and injured, correct? Correct. An additional uh, citation that you charged the defendants with after learning the facts was 459-502A, Section A1, uh, I. correct? Correct. And in fact, the defendant was found or pled guilty to that citation. Is that correct? That is correct. That citation requires the owner or keeper of a dog shall be guilty of harboring a dangerous dog if the judge finds beyond a reasonable doubt that the following elements have been proven. The dog has done any of the following, and then you charged them under one, triple I. Uh, well, you charged them under I, inflicted severe injury on a human without provocation on private or public property. And you also charged under triple I, which was attacked a human without provocation. Is that correct? That's correct. Uh, you found that the defendants were the owner, that someone was injured, and therefore, as noted uh, from the magisterial district court, the defendants were found guilty of that as well, correct? Correct. What were the other two citations? The other two citations was a, a license violation. The dog wasn't, they, they failed to produce a license um, for the county of Allegheny and a rabies violation, which they didn't produce the paperwork whenever a, when someone's bit by a dog, um, you're required to show the rabies vaccination. And they did not, at the time they did not, at the magistrates they brought it with them. Now, um, in regard to your independent recollection, then, can you tell us what that is? Uh, the, the whole incident? Yeah. Yes, please. Yeah. Um, on January 11th, 2020, um, officers were dispatched at 4911 uh, Elmwood. It was around 7.30 p.m. in the afternoon or in the evening uh, for a child that was bit by a dog. When we arrived on scene, we made contact with um, the child, her mother, and, her, and his grandfather. The child was at the time in the back seat of the, or in the front seat of the grandfather's car uh, with a visible wound in the middle of his forehead between his eyes, just above his, just above the middle of his eyes. 
Um, but when the EMS arrived on scene, they treated him and they took him to Children's Hospital for further treatment. Um, I spoke with the dog owner, and after the dog was separated, um, she stated that the child attempted to come into the home by placing his foot on the threshold of the doorway. Um, after a certain time of talking with her, getting the dog's information, um, what could be gathered, um, her husband came home pretty irate and stated that there was a, a camera system, a blank camera system that recorded the whole incident. When we asked him to show us the incident, um, he began to, but then stopped, became more irate, and he failed to produce the video. Now, and we'll get into it a little more, but he states that he kept showing you the video, but you wouldn't take, and I'm paraphrasing, of course, that you wouldn't take that that was the only video for an answer. Is that true? Well, that's not correct. He, he, he attempted to show us, but he, he would not rewind far enough back for us to observe the actual video itself. And like I said, um, he became irate and he stopped showing us the video. Okay. Um, so do you have any other uh, independent, we're gonna go over your police report, but any other independent recollection right now? Uh, not this time, no. And is that a true and accurate depiction of the way this child looked on the date of this incident? Yes, this was taken that night. And uh, the scar on his face, I mean, the wound on his face, can you describe that, how, how it looked? Uh, it, it looked like a deep gash. Um, consistent, consistent with a dog bite in your it, professional opinion? Yes, at the time we didn't, we didn't look at the rest of his body um, just because of the seriousness of the wound. We took a picture of the initial wound on his face and then he immediately left the scene to go to the hospital. And would you describe that uh, injury as a, inflict, a severe injury inflicted on a human by a dog? Yes. All right. Did you arrive at the scene? Yes. Can you tell us what happens according to the police report? Yes. According to the police report, um, when arriving on scene, made contact with the mother of the seven-year-old that was bitten, Marlena Wood. Marlena was holding her son, the juvenile victim, um, in front of the passenger seat of her father's vehicle. Uh, his face was covered in blood and a visible deep bite marks on his forehead. Baldwin EMS was on scene treated the uh, juvenile victim before taking him to Children's Hospital for further treatment. Tell me what happened with Officer Perla according to the police report. Sure. Um, Officer Perla made contact with Blayton, uh, Clyde Boyce Jr. Clyde State who's working and delivering for Portofino's Pizza. Uh, the resident of 4911 had an order he was delivering to them. Uh, Clyde was talking with Marlena, the juvenile victim. He, he took uh, Marlene and the juvenile victim along with him for delivering uh, and the juvenile went went with Clyde to the front door for 4911 Elmwood. Uh, the resident customer uh, answered the door. When the doors opened, Pitbull ran out. The Pitbull ran behind Clyde and jumped on the back of the juvenile victim. Uh, the Pitbull took him to the ground, began attacking him. When he rolled over, uh, the Pitbull started to bite his face. The owner of the dog pulled the Pitbull off of the victim and brought it back into the house. Did Sergeant Kearns do anything according to the police report? Yeah, he made contact with the Pitbull's owner at 4911 Elmwood. Uh, Sergeant Kearns advised the owner to secure the dogs before the police interviewed her about the incident. The dogs were placed in the separate room of the residence. So the dogs were secured, is that correct? That's correct. All right. And then did you do anything with Officer Gigliotti? Yeah, Officer Gigliotti and I, like with the owner of the Pitbull, identified as Christine Payne Pinto. Uh, Christine stated that I came to her door the juvenile victim placed his foot on the threshold or doorway, and that's when the pit bull attacked. Christine was asked if the juvenile victim stepped into her residence, and she said no. So that would be something that you would specifically ask and receive an answer to, that the, the minor did not step into the residence. Is that correct? That is correct. Okay. So then what else did Christine say? Uh, she stated that the dog that attacked was an American Staffordshire uh, Bull Terrier. Fawn colored, tan and white colored, and it was three years old. All right, now when you're speaking to Christine, the dog owner, did anyone come to the residence? Yes, eventually her husband came home. And can you tell me, according to the police report, what happened when he came? Sure, uh, while speaking with Christine, her husband came home. Her husband came into the front door, highly agitated. So let me stop like you. Let me, I'm gonna stop you quite often in this paragraph and the next, but when you say, highly agitated. Can you describe uh, what happened, I guess, or tell me why you're characterizing it in the police report as her husband being, quote, highly agitated? 
Sure. Um, our first contact with him, uh, he said that he didn't like the police, let alone being in his home without knowing why we were there. Um, did he ever tell stuff. you why he didn't like the police? No, he did not. Well, first off, um, did would this person specifically say the dog was not his? Yes. You're sure of that? Yes. Okay. At that time, did you notice anything about this gentleman? Yeah, he, he displayed many signs of being under the influence of alcohol. Um, he, he displayed third speech, glassy bloodshot eyes, and the other of alcohol beverage emitting from his person. Hey, where he was before? Uh, he said that he was out for his birthday. At, um, I can't remember if it was a bar or a friend's house, but he was out drinking. So uh, did he tell you specifically, officer, how he got notified that he might want to come back to his residence? Yeah, he said he had received an alert from his phone, from his blank camera system. Now, uh, did you ask him anything? I asked him where the camera was located and he pointed above his door. Okay. Now, uh, did you ask him for any other information concerning the camera specifically? Yeah, I asked him if um, there's footage of, of the incident, the dog attacking the juvenile victim. And um, he said that there would be. Okay. So then what happened? When he attempted to find the footage, he again became agitated and refused to show any more footage. So the fact is, according to what he told you and the way he told you, it seemed to you that there was footage of the actual dog bite biting this minor child, correct? Correct. However, the defendant refused to cooperate and show you this footage despite him telling you there was footage of it. Correct. And so then he became agitated, and what occurred? No, he refused to show any, any more footage at all. The magistrate's hearing the defendants pled or were found guilty to two citations, correct? Correct. One citation was that the dog that bit Josiah, who was seven years old, was dangerous, correct? Correct. And the other one was that the defendants did not keep reasonable control of their dog, which caused that the dog to bite another person and him be injured. Correct? Correct. I just want to make sure this is accurate. You see first there it says unlawful confinement and control. And what does it say? It says summary, unlawful confinement and control, and then dog attacks human without provocation. And what are you on both? Guilty. Okay. Do you have any reason to dispute that? I don't. I, I, I thought it was just one. So in regard to the first one, uh, you were you pled guilty to being an unlawful owner or keeper of a dog, correct? That's the first thing that that case, that, that charge involves. Okay. So first off, you, um, it basically says that you did not keep your dog under reasonable control, correct? If that's what it says. Okay. And then the second one, dog attacks human, basically says that uh, your dog inflicted severe injury on a human without provocation, correct? Objection. Christine, I'm sorry. When I say objection, you can still answer unless I instruct you otherwise. Oh, okay. Um, yes, that's what it says. And like I said, I was under the impression that that's what I pled guilty to was ending up having to register my dog as a dangerous animal. Just let me ask you, are you disputing your dog bit this child? No, I'm not, not okay. at all. You would agree that your dog bit the child then, correct? Yes, sir. And you would also agree that the child sustained injury, correct? Yes, sir. And would you agree that you didn't have any type of signs or anything uh, notifying a dog at all, correct? Correct. And the fact about it is, is you had the door open, correct? I did. And you knew the dog was sitting to the left of you, correct? Objection. I, I guess I did. Okay. And you made the intentional decision at that time, knowing that you were standing there, knowing that the dog was to the left, to open the door. Objection. I did. There was nothing that would have prevented you from saying, hey, leave the pizza there, I'll grab it when you leave, correct? Correct. As a result of opening the door, that allowed the dog to then get to the person outside the door, correct? Correct. 
In other words, if the door was kept shut, the dog would never have been able to get to the young boy and bite him, correct? Objection. I would, I don't know. I would think not. It's your house. I don't know. Is there any way that that dog could have gotten outside of your house but for opening the door? No. Pull up the vet records, uh, Madam Court, uh, or Court Videographer. The name of the dog that bit this person, his name is what? Duke. Okay. What is the name on this vet record? Duke. And what type of breed is the veterinarian saying he is? Pitbull. Okay, that's fair. Um, in regard to uh, your dog only biting one person, can we go to page six? Videographer. Uh, can you tell me right on top, what does that say? It says bites unprovoked. Okay, and what does it say to the right of that? Muzzle. And how many explanation part points are there? Three. Okay, and uh, when we look at to the right on, on, on the bottom here, what does it say uh, down in the red by the stars? Lunged attack in room when went to pet, no warning. Okay. Um, and uh, in regard to then that, uh, the next date, what does it say there? I'm sorry, in regard to? Down on the bottom, the 6-1 here. What does it say? I'm sorry. Bit, bit doctor unprovoked. Going back to your story, you were at the monkey bar. You weren't sure, you were probably at a drink, but you weren't sure what it, what it was. Uh, so then what happens? So my son and I left and came home. I guess then I ordered pizza. Okay, then what happens? So the pizza came, um, pizza delivery man came with the pizza. And I remember opening up the door and the car was parked right out front and the pizza delivery man was with a younger child who were approaching the door, which I thought was a little strange, but I didn't say anything. Um, and I could see somebody else sitting in the car. Um, at that point in time, I, I guess as they got closer, I opened up the door to get the pizza or to pay. I don't remember if I paid online or if I, how I did it, but I opened up the door and like I said, I saw the child standing there who was a child, they were antsy, they were moving around. Um, and then the child cut in front of the gentleman with the pizza. Right. Um, in regard to the pizza place, uh, you, the pizza place, well, I'll leave that. Um, when you ordered a pizza, the delivery guy came, correct? Correct. And that was anticipated. You obviously knew when you ordered the pizza that a guy or a girl was going to show up to your property holding a pizza, hopefully. Correct. That was the goal. That's why you called, correct? Correct, yes. Okay. And you basically told me that you, when they pulled up, you actually saw that them, looked out, you saw the delivery guy coming towards the door, correct? Well, I opened up my door and then, so, yeah. Well, right, but you, what you had told me, and I'm stopping you, you said the pizza guy came, the delivery guy came. You said you then opened your door, correct? Correct. Now, you say that you then saw that the pizza guy had a younger child. Is that correct? Correct. And you also even noticed that there was a person in the car. Correct. After I saw the child, I looked back at the car because I just thought it was odd. Okay. So you think things are odd. Your door's open. You now already noticed that there was a pizza guy coming towards your door, correct? Correct. You also noticed the pizza guy had a younger child, correct? Correct. You also noticed there's someone in the car, correct? Correct. At this time, you're still standing at your door, correct? Correct. You're watching the gentleman and the younger child come towards from the roadway towards your door. You're watching them walk towards you, correct? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. And you still have the door open, correct? Yes. I, and I don't know if I had the screen door open at that time, I'll be honest, or right. if I just had my big door open, but I had like the main door open for sure. But regardless, you, the, the, the main door was open, the screen door may have been shut, but at that time, the dog was not out of the house, correct? Correct. Okay. And you, at that time, know 
before the dog does anything or the kid knows anything, you see it, you know the pizza guy's walking towards you and you also know he's with the younger child. Yes. Right, takes five seconds or so for the guy to walk over to the door. Is that correct? I guess. Yeah. Okay, what, ha I don't want you to guess, would, would it be about five, five to 10 seconds? What would you say? Probably, I mean, it's not a long walk, it's not a long sidewalk. Okay, how long is the sidewalk? 10 yards, maybe? I'm not a good judge of, uh, of distance at all. Okay, um, in regard to, well, let's do seconds. And when you say five to 10 seconds, you see them walking towards the door? I think that's fair. Okay, then basically um, you, uh, as uh, he gets closer, you say you open the door. Correct. Of I, course, think, I, I said, of course, yes, the dog was in the house. And you also knew that there was a door that was shut so the dog couldn't leave, correct? Correct. You also knew there was a pizza guy coming from the roadway towards your house, correct? Correct. And you also knew he was with a small child? Correct. Okay. At that point in time, you then decided to open the door, correct? Correct. When you opened the door, you said you saw the child standing there and the child you said as a normal child would be was being fidgety and was moving around. Correct. You noticed that. Well, I did notice that, yes. Yeah, that's right. Okay. And at that point in time, you said he began to go in front of the pizza guy, correct? Correct. Okay. Now, at that time, did you try shutting the door? I did not. Okay. But a boy did, other than being on your property that caused your dog to bite his face. Like I said, I was not present at the time, and I don't feel comfortable speaking on that fact. So you're here today, you've said that you've done an investigation for the past, this, this dog bite incident happened, um, you know, in 2020, over two years ago. So from the time of the dog bite, all the way up until we're sitting here today, you just said that my, my client, a young boy who was seven years old at the time of this incident, who got his face close to being bitten off by your dog, did something wrong. Action. So what I'm asking you, sir, is a simple question. And that is, is other than being on your property, what did that boy do to cause your animal to attack his face? I was not present at the time. I did not see anything. Okay. The story that I have heard that the child went to step into the house to possibly pet the dog or like I said, I was not there, so I don't know. Okay. So you heard a story that the boy went to step into the house. Who told you that story? Uh, I believe that's in the police report. Okay anywhere else besides the police report? That's what my wife told me also, because she's the one that gave the report. Okay, in regards to the police report, do you know that it does says nothing that the boy tried to step into the house? I don't recall. Okay. Did that look like it was severe injury that your dog caused for this seven-year-old? Objection. No. My question. my question is, as we sit here today, do you know of any way, shape, or form that this boy provocated your dog to have your dog bite him? I do not know. What is your relationship to Marlena Wood? She's like a daughter to me. We've been friends for a long time. What is your relationship then to JP? Since he was born, I've been Papa. Marlena's two daughters, while they were in high school and junior high, I was Papa. They had nine children between the two of them. They all call me Papa, so it's like a big family. Okay, where did you work in January 2020? Portofino's. What was your position? I was a delivery driver. Okay, was the delivery to the Panapinos your first delivery on the night? Yes. And my understanding is that Marlena Wood and JP were with you. Is that right? Yes, they were. Okay. And my understanding is that Marlena Wood and JP were with you. Is that right? Yes, they were. Okay. How did they come to go along with you? A friend of mine, Marcus Robinson, he owns the Pittsburgh Bulls ABA pro basketball team, and he asked me to shoot the event. JP is a big basketball fan, and he wanted to know if they could go too. So I said yes. And when we left the basketball game, I was already late for work, so they rode along with me. So am I correct that Marlena and JP went with you to the basketball game and then just went straight to work? at Portofino's with you? That is correct. Had Marlena and JP ridden along with you on your deliveries before before the Portofino's? A couple of times. 
Okay, can you, and I know you said this a couple of times, but can you estimate how many times they had ridden along with you for any of your delivery positions? Well, for Portofino's, maybe three times. Three times prior? Yes. Okay, did anyone for Portofino's know that Marlena and JP were driving along with you that night? I don't know. They stayed in the car. I just ran in, grabbed the pizza, and came right back out. How did he attack JP? He jumped on his back, knocked him to the ground, and started biting him. And that's when I reached down to grab him by his collar. Okay. He jumped around and bit me on my arm. Of course, I instinctively jerked back, and he continued his attack on JP. Okay, so he jumped on JP's back. Did he push him forward or to the side or to the back? Straight forward. Okay, and at that point, where was JP? For example, was he on the sidewalk? Was he in the yard? He was to the left of me on the ground, and I'm thinking there was a little flower bed there or something, but everything happened quick. Okay, besides Mrs. Panapino and, yes, Mrs. Panapino, was there anyone else in the area? No. Okay, now the dog you said bit your arm when you reached down to him. Were you reaching towards the dog? I was reaching for his collar to pull him off. Okay, and which arm did the dog bite? My right arm. Which part of your right arm? Upper forearm. Did you receive any sort of medical attention for that? No, I've worked in a hospital three and a half years and I treated the wound myself. Once you got to the car, were you able to view JP's injuries? Oh yes, once I got back to the car. And what did you see? I saw his face was covered with blood. He had a rip in his flesh above his left eye. He had a bite by his eyeball on the side of his head. Blood was running down. And just so that I'm sure, while you worked for the pizza place, there were no signs saying that you couldn't bring anyone to your deliveries, correct? Correct. I've seen no signs. And there was actually no rules about bringing people that were told to you before this incident, correct? No, there wasn't. And sir, you were in the military previously. I would imagine if there were rules, you would have followed them. Of course. And your description of these persons on the date of this incident were visibly intoxicated, correct? Right. Both of them were slurring words, and like I said, his change from walking out to becoming aggressive was not a normal response. Now, in regard to the ambulance, did the defendant's conduct prevent this young boy, whose face we saw pictures of, from obtaining medical treatment? Yes. Until I pulled up, they said they would not come down to a place that was possibly having an altercation. So, in essence, the defendant's conduct not only led to the dog bite, but also to the boy not receiving medical care because they continued their belligerent conduct? Yes. Okay, in regard to the police report, it seems Ms. Panapino or someone with the defendants had stated that JP may have taken a step towards the door or entered the doorway. Did that in any way, shape, or form happen? No. Did JP do anything whatsoever that would lead the dog to bite him? No. Would you describe this dog bite as unprovoked aggressive dog attack? Yes. At some point you carried JP into the car? Yes. What happened after that? I called 911. Okay, and then what? And then the husband was being very belligerent, screaming at us, opening my son's door, making threats, just trying to be very aggressive. And then what happened? Then since while I was on the phone with 911, they could hear the commotion. Okay, and then what? And then the ambulance came, but waited for the police to come first before they treated JP.